Home Assistant has released a new piece of hardware to control your home locally through voice. It's the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, and this device is fully local, allows you to control everything in your Home Assistant home uh, without having to use the cloud. Now there's some caveats to that, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I will be saying the wake word, okay, Nabu, multiple times in this video. So be aware of that. If you have devices that get triggered by that, then you may have to do something to prevent that from happening. So let's dig into this device. So this is a new Home Assistant voice device that they've come out with. This is the preview edition, but this is the box that comes in. So let's just pop in here real quick and see what we've got here. A nice little touch here with the logo, the Home Assistant logo. Open that up, a little OK Nabu, that's the uh, wake word that's uh, on here already. So you just talk to the device that way. And then here's a QR code to help you get started. And then some of the things that you can say to it, although this will change based on how you have things set up. If you're using one of the LLM models or something else, there's a lot more stuff you can do. But this is some examples of what you can say. And there's a link on this card to tell you for uh, to tell you where to go to get more tips and stuff for using this. Warranty and safety information, which is required on all electronic devices. And here's the device itself. It's not very big. It's uh, smaller than I thought it would be. Uh, this is the current model and other information about it. And it has a USB-C port for power. By the way, that's not included with the device. You also have a uh, 3.5 inch, I believe, headphone jack. So that's audio out there. This is a, a rotary knob on here. And then this is a tactile button here. You also have a mute button and this removes the power from the microphone. So when you turn that, turn that on or mute, it removes it from the microphone itself. And then here you have some uh, Grove, a, a Grove port that allows you to add some additional stuff to it. Uh, and then there's a speaker out right here. So very tiny device. Uh, it fits nicely within um, your, any, anywhere you want to put it within your house. You've got some rubber feet down here on the bottom. And I've seen some folks already do some experimentation with printing um, some mounts for it. So you could mount it on the wall or plug it into a, a wall a socket from the mount. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff already happening out there. And, and hopefully some of those uh, with 3D printers will be able to get their hands on some of the uh, designs that some of our, the folks have already been playing around with on these. Uh, anyway, it's got dual microphones. You can see those on here. So uh, that helps with noise cancellation and some other efficiencies in getting the microphone inputs to recognize your voice and do stuff with it. So that's the device right here. Let's go ahead and get it set up in um, Home Assistant. And that by itself is also a very easy process. All right, so adding this to Home Assistant is very simple. Uh, basically, you just plug it in. So I'm gonna plug in the USB-C port to it and give it some power. And it's gonna come on, you'll see a little white light here in just a second. I guess it's white, looks white to me, whatever color it is. You'll see something like that when you first plug it in. And so when you do that, the next you wanna do is go to your, uh, your Home Assistant app. And you're gonna to go to settings and then integrations or devices. And you're gonna see this Home Assistant uh, device show up, you're gonna click on add, and you're gonna put in your Wi-Fi information. So essentially what you're doing here is just adding it to your Wi-Fi network. Click on continue. It's gonna configure that. See what we're doing here. So it's gonna con configure the device for your Wi-Fi, and you're gonna push a button here so it can authorize it. And once you authorize it, it's gonna to connect to Wi-Fi And it'll say Wi-Fi continue successfully. You can now see a blue ring on here. It's showing that it is now connecting or connected to Wi-Fi. And on your phone, if you're continuing with your phone, you can click on add, because it'll say it's available. And it says, do you want to add the SPM Home, no, Home Assistant voice to Home Assistant? Click on submit. And now it's that you are done. It's been added. And that's all there is to adding it to Home Assistant. And now, if everything went successfully, the light is off and it's just sitting here waiting for you to say something to it. Now I'm gonna say the trigger word 
and we'll see what happens. Okay, Nabu. Turn on coffee lamp. Turn on the light. Okay, so that's working already. I mean, I don't know how much simpler it can be than doing that. Now, if you happen to go through the process of adding the Wi-Fi and then decide you want to go to Home Assistant, you can also do the same thing I just did through Home Assistant in terms of adding it. You just uh, come over here and you click on the Add button. And again, it asks, do you want to add this to Home Assistant? You click on Submit. And it is now finished and automatically it's going to start checking for updates, which is amazing. And now it's going through an update process and I'm starting to see this uh, flash on here or it did, it had a blue ring on here for a second. And it says setup will continue once the device is awake. So get ready for the wake word. Okay, Nabu. And I'm going to say it again. Okay, Nabu. And then you can select an area. And the reason the area is important is if you put multiple devices like this in your house, then if you say something like turn off the lights, and you have lights set for that particular area and you have this device for that area, it will turn off the lights in that area. So I'm gonna just put this in uh, my studio here because that's where it's at and say next. And now here's the wake word. Now, this is something that um, is, is interesting here. The wake word is hard coded, I thought, on the device itself. I didn't think you could change it. However, the OK Nabu word has been used. Oops, I just triggered it. This word has been uh, trained so much in so many different languages. It's probably the best one to use for anything, but you may be able to change it. Let me try this here. Your assistant is a preferred assistant. I have multiple assistants configured. So I have ChatGBT and uh, Google Gemini. I'm going to leave it as preferred because if I decide I want to change the Assistant, I go into my voice assistants and change it directly there for the preferred. And then you can choose the voice that talks to you in. And I'm going to test this. Let me see if this even works. Hey, Jarvis. Hey, Jarvis. Hey, Jarvis. Okay. Uh, surprisingly, I was under the impression that the wake word was hard coded in there. So I could be wrong about that. So it did work, it responded to it. Let me actually try to do something with it though. Hey Jarvis, turn on game room lamp. Turn down the switch. Okay, it's working. Hey Jarvis, turn off game room lamp. Turned off the switch. Okay, so um, I was wrong. Maybe, maybe it'll work with this word. I'll try it for a little while and see what it looks like. And then I can click on done. All right, so that's another way to add it. I mean, that's as simple as adding this device to Home Assistant. There's not a lot to it. If you've never used voice assistants before, um, my recommendation is to sign up for the Nabu Casa Cloud, the Home Assistant Cloud. And then when you go into your settings here and you work, uh, you look at your voice assistant, then you are able to choose the Home Assistant Cloud as your uh, conversation agent or your speech to text and your text to speech. That way it's using their network and it's super fast and processes everything quickly. The reason why I'm able to take this out of the box and start controlling things right away. You heard me talk to a couple of different devices is because I already have entities exposed for my assist pipeline. So if I click on that, everything here, that's got this little conversation box has been exposed to my home assistant pipeline, my voice pipeline. And these other ones are my, um, my Amazon smart speaker environment. So some of them are exposed to that because I still have some of those around the house. And then all of the rest of these are exposed directly to the assist pipeline. So I could say something like turn on game room lamp, and it's going to know because I've exposed that here through the assist pipeline. So that's how I'm able to do that. If you've never done this before, once you come in here and you set this up, you're going to need to come in here to voice assistant and you're going to need to go here and you're going to have to set up um, your conversation agent and whatnot. And then you come over here to your uh, entities exposed and you can come down here to the bottom right and expose entities and you can search for any entity you want to expose and you can click on it 
and you can add it to the home assistant um, or you can add it to the assist pipeline. So I click on it there and now I think it was all lights or something is now, yeah, this one right here is now exposed to the assistant. If you click on this here, you can also add it to these other ones or remove it or add it, however you want to do it, right? So you have the option to choose the assist device you want to set those up for. All right, so let's talk some specs here. This is a, well, first of all, I talked about this. It requires Home Assistant to operate. So you need to make sure you're running Home Assistant. The Home Assistant hardware can lead to slow speech processing. So if you're running a Pi or something like that, again, it is definitely advantageous or recommended that you offload speech processing to the Home Assistant cloud. So this has an ESP32 S3, has 16 megabytes of flash, eight megabytes of PS RAM. The audio processing is an XMOS XU316 that allows it to do echo cancellation, stationary noise removal, and auto gain control. It's powered by that USB-C device, five volts at two amps. Again, not included with the kit. You, you can use any of those phone chargers you have laying around for the most part for that. It's got a 2.4 gig radio for the Wi-Fi and it has Bluetooth in it. Uh, and for audio output, three and a half millimeter stereo headphone jack, it's got a digital to analog converter uh, with a 48 kilohertz sampling rate. So you can output that to your favorite speakers. Um, of course, we talked about the buttons. It has a rotary dial for volume control, that mute switch. And if you push the mute switch or flip the mute switch on here, you'll see. Makes a nice little whooshing sound. And it also turns that red so that you can tell it's muted. So the switch on the side is red. The dial is red. So if I turn it off back to no lights so you can tell what's happening there. Now also for these rotary buttons, not only is it a rotary button for volume control, which you can see here, let me turn the lights off so you can see it better. The volume control, when you turn it, spins, or the rotary button spins. If you double press the button and then you turn the knob, you can change the color. And hopefully you can see that. It's changing different colors as I turn this. So you can choose whatever color you want the uh, device to be. Let me just turn it to green here. So I'll leave it at green, it's kind of washed out. But anyway, you see that? And then the button also is a single press, double press, and a triple press. So you can set different automations for the different button presses. Uh, basically, if you double press it, it turns on living room lights. If you triple press it, it turns on the office lights. So you could modify this to whatever, but it does take this event state, home assist voice preview edition button press, and it makes it so that you can capture those presses and do something with them. So nice to have those rotary dials and buttons haptically able to do things. Internal speaker, internal dual mic array, that hardware mute switch I just talked about, and it's got a dedicated line for audio in and out. Okay, that Grove port allows you to add other accessories. Now I haven't opened it up. I'm not going to open it up right now, but you can, uh, it only has a couple screws to access the internals. You don't have to, um, do something crazy to open it up. And it also has exposed pads on the board for modding. If you want to do something with it, this is open source. Uh, you're, you're purchasing the hardware, but it doesn't mean you can't do what you want with it once you have it. So it's almost like buying an experimental device. You can use it out of the box without doing anything with it. Or if you're a tinkerer, you can go on there and start messing around with it and doing all kinds of fun stuff. It's really up to you what you want to do with it. So for 59 bucks, you get a, a toy to play with or just use out of the box. It comes with preload ESP home. Uh, let's see, like we said a few times, home assistant is required and must be running on another device. You must have, um, well, let's see, for fully local speech processing, you need to have Home Assistant based on an Intel N100 or higher. Anything weaker than that, recommended the Home Assistant cloud for optimal speech processing. And then there's the up-to-date list for the language support. You can go search that page again and see what languages are supported for um, Home Assistant. Again, like example, Polish is fully supported on the cloud, but not necessarily not necessarily locally. That continues to change as things develop here. Um, use it indoors, normal indoor stuff applies. 
And then it's uh, 120 grams. This is the size for that device. The, the If you look at the device, it is, um, it's injection molded, so it's not 3D printed. Polycarbonate plastic, and it's white and semi-transparent. Uh, again, people have already started printing this around here, and <laughs> done. They've done some minions. They've done some uh, Pokemon-looking stuff. I mean, once this is released, you'll probably start seeing a whole bunch of um, files out there if you have a 3D printer to kind of print different things for it. And I mentioned that earlier on in the video. All right. Well, that's the device. If you're not already using the voice pipeline with something else or haven't played with it, it's still easy to get on here. It's going to ask you to use um, which thing you want to use. That would be the Home Assistant Cloud in that case. Just use that and you can be up and running quickly. Make sure you expose the entities to what you want to control in your household and then you're ready to go. And then just have fun with it. It is a preview edition. It is still going to be a preview edition. Work is still being done to make it better and better and better. I have been using it for two to three weeks now without any issues at all. I turn things on and off. I've played with the LLMs. I've set up a couple of custom intents that allow me to get weather forecasts locally from my weather provider, from my weather station in the backyard. I mean, just so many things you can do with it. And it's it's mature enough, even as a preview edition, that I don't have any problems if I wanted to replace all of my smart speakers in the house already. This is now available as of the video that uh, you're seeing right now. I will put any relevant links in my description below for getting access to this device. My assumption is they're gonna sell out quickly for the first round, um, but definitely this is something that if you're interested in getting local voice control, privacy focused uh, based on best practices and quality hardware for inexpensive price, this is the thing you need to go with. And with that, let me know if you have any questions down below. Let me know if you have any questions in Discord. I suspect there'll be a lot of questions related to the assist pipeline because I didn't cover that well in this video. Just let me know and I'll do my best to help you. And with that, we will see you on the next one. Hey Jarvis. What is today's forecast? Today it is expected to be lightning rainy. The high will be 72 and the low will be 63. The chance of precipitation is 20%. Wind will be 4.47 with gusts to 15.66. Hey Jarvis. Turn off coffee lamp. Turned off the light. Hey Jarvis. Turn on coffee lamp. Turned on the light. Hey Jarvis, what is tomorrow's for? Hey Jarvis, what is tomorrow's forecast? Tomorrow will be lightning rainy. The high will be 72 and the low will be 63. The chance of precipitation is 20%. Wind will be 4.47 with gusts to 15.66. Hey Jarvis. How many feet are in an inch? There are 1 slash 12 feet in an inch. Hey Jarvis. How many miles is it from the earth to the sun? The distance from the earth to the sun is not constant because earth's orbit is elliptical. The average distance is about 93 million miles, 149.6 million kilometers. This is also known as one astronomical unit, AU.